What's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome back to the Punk Rock Review Podcast. Today's guest is Rob from the Punk Ots. Go check out his channel. Love him like you love me. No, 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 no. Treat him way better than you treat me. But still, go check out his channel. It's awesome, dude. Today, we are going to talk about folk punk. This is an introduction of sorts. This is the folk punk iceberg. I've never done an iceberg thing. So uh, we're just going to talk about it more so than show you. But I got a list of stuff here. And... Uh, yeah, so welcome to the show, everybody. Thank you for hanging out with me again, Rob. I appreciate it, bud. Oh, I'm excited to be here and excited to kind of have, like, be at the learning tree. You know what I mean? And kind of discover something. I feel like I've got a little bit of knowledge on the subject, but I also feel like there's a lot room, a lot of room for me to grow as well. So in mm -hmm. the event that somebody on this sees or hears something incorrect or wants to add a band to the list, throw it in the comments. Man, I'd love to learn some as well. So we're going to talk folk punk, like I said a minute ago. This is like crust punk, like branch. Like crust punk as a branch, and it's like unplugged. It's like Nirvana unplugged in New York. You know, days and days unplugged on a train. So we got folk punk. Is I, I love this genre of music. And it's there's stuff that's considered folk punk that I'd never considered before until thinking about this video and doing a little research for it. So, yeah, before we get moving on into the actual bands and stuff, dude. So this morning I woke up. Because I was laying in bed and literally, dude, like the, uh, my bed fell through my floor. Oh, shoot. I know, dude. Like, you should see. I'll send you pictures later, man. Like, they had to cut a whole giant, like, five foot by seven foot hole, redo the floor. Because we live in a, a, a pre-constructed home, a, a, a double wide, if you will. It's a big, mm -hmm. nice house, though. But they have these, uh, whereas in a normal home, you have your ventilation going through your ceiling. So you have drips through your ceiling sometimes. Yeah. Ours is just reversed. Our ventilation is going through the floor. So it, it softens the floor occasionally. It's the same uh, thing. It's just reversed. And I was like, I'd never thought about it. So I'm laying in bed, dude, literally, bro. The foot of my bed, like the actual foot of it, could do right through the floor. And I was like, bam, bam. And I set up. My wife heard it in the living room. It was like, what was that? And I was like, uh, me getting out of bed, I guess. Like, so yeah. So how's your self-esteem after, you know, you just like literally broke through the floor, just wake, get it, laying in bed? Well, I drank less gym. soda and drank more water today. <laughs> I can, I can tell you that. I drink a lot more water. Yeah. Don't blame it on the sub floor. And I just, you know, Bro, it better sub floor. Thank you. How'd you know that's what it was called? Cause I used to live in a place just like that and have the oh, same okay. exact issues. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Never Dude. the bed, but like I uh, knew how to step on every stud. Just because yeah, I right. knew the, the spots. Yeah. Um, before we get going any further, uh, shout out to April from Apes of the State and Matt Pless, two folk punk musicians that have done my podcast very recently. And I just want to extend uh, my gratitude to them because, well, it's important for us to get guests on the show. And they were really kind and nice and, uh, you know, generous with their time. So I wanted to say thank you. But the Matt Pless one will probably drop right before, right after this does. It's a good dose okay. of full punk content then for your for your viewers. Yeah. It all started by accident on my uh TikTok because I was going through my records and I found one from a group called Wingnut Dishwasher Union and I forgot I had it. So I listened to it mm -hmm. and then I was like, man, I forgot how good this was. And I posted a video on TikTok of Pat the Bunny. And we'll talk about him in a minute too. And it blew up. It did like 80,000 views and it was it blew my mind. I had no idea. Um it led me like in a reversal of sorts. Like I went back and listened to a bunch of bands that I hadn't heard in a while. Mm -hmm. And I discovered some new ones. And so it was cool, man. And I've been, I've been heavy on folk punk lately. If I'm sure you are very well aware of that, but <laughs> yeah. um, my sister, my sister, excuse me, my daughter, I took her to her second show recently and it was a folk punk show. She went and saw Days and Days. And she's only turning nine years old in two weeks from today. So she's young. And so it was cool for her to get to meet the bands and stuff. Uh, and speaking of Days and Days, I'm doing some DIY video stuff on the channel. And I make stuff like this. <clears throat> These are both uh, legitimate hand-screened canvas patches. And so I'm not trying to sell these. I just wanted to show you guys how to make them. And Rob, I'm going to send you these ones. But if you got a couple of bands that you want me to make patches for, let me know. I'll make them for you. Yeah, awesome. I got some jackets that could, that could use some uh, some love. Dude, 
don't we always i've got probably four hoodies and they're none of them are actually the way that i want them to look yet mm -hmm. so yeah all right. I, I buy clothes just to put patches on them of stuff i almost i've done wear, that but yeah i've done that and i've also not worn it as well yeah huh. okay so let's start at the very tip of the iceberg of folk punk music bands that most people know songs we're mostly familiar with Again, this is not a definitive list. This is just stuff that I came up with in the past few days. Um, but I reached out to April from Apes of the State and was like, hey, what do you recommend I talk about in those videos? Or somebody that I should definitely not forget. And I was thinking she's going to tell me a bunch of deep cuts. Mm -hmm. She surprised me. She's like, hey, you know, this, 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 and this. Don't forget the Violent Femmes. And I was like, what? <laughs> I don't even consider them a punk band or a folk punk band. Yeah. Or maybe I should say I didn't. So that's at the top of the list. That's the top of the of the iceberg will be the Violent Femmes because they came out in the early 80s, mid 80s. And I mean, they're still popular. They're huge. They've got their self-titled album from 1983. And the two songs that I came up with were uh, Added Up, which I'm sure everybody's familiar with. But Blister in the Sun is like a billion stream song. Mm -hmm. That's, um, if you go listen to it, they're the same template as most of the folk punk stuff that I'm going to mention in this video. So they are absolutely folk punk. It just surprised me. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that. Are yeah, you familiar I just with think that of, band? yeah. I just think of alternative. They're just like an alternative rock band. It, it's, you know, right? alternative band and, and very unique though. Like obviously now when you think about it for a second, like it, it makes sense because that's what they did. A lot of acoustic guitar, all that. A lot. You know, and making the, you know, making the percussive sounds with the acoustic guitar. That they do that mm -hmm. in, their, in their famous songs but I, I think of them as yeah mainstream like 90s alternative band is how and controversial yeah. with their lyrics and, and stuff like that, so that way, very much punk rock in that yeah that, that is exactly where i was going with this their lyrical content is very uh fiery very um political mm -hmm. stubborn they were, they were like banned at one point too weren't they? they they were like on one of those lists i think of like uh Man. back in like the 80s and stuff when when politicians Dude, be on those trips i'm barely familiar with them like i know mm. a couple of their songs and when i when i was looking on spotify to listen to some stuff i was like oh, okay i recognize these so like but it wasn't like i've ever worn a t-shirt i've never been to yeah. a show or anything so uh, i put them in the same category as jane's addiction usually but it looks mm -hmm. like i'm gonna have to kind of well that's what i was thinking like 90s alternative yeah uh, yeah but it's funny though because i think that applies to a lot of the subgenres of punk a lot of subgenres yeah. of punk are different forms of alternative rock it's just Agreed. the band that might have been the peak or the one that kind of got mainstream the way like you know the yeah the, the gateway band might have yeah and i think that's the case with a lot that's how influential punk rock is on all of rock that pretty much all the subgenres of rock are really subgenres of punk more so than the different metal and, and rock uh variants yeah i mean punk came around before most of it so i'd have to say mm -hmm. you're right punk and metal have very similar timelines yeah a lot of people don't want to agree with it but they do um the 70s and everything yeah yeah it, late, it really late mid up. late 70s but and it's and it's all anti-disco that's the thing of it it's all just like yes it just goes against what the popular music was which is the defining thing but i think that it defines punk a little more than it does metal i think metal got its own identity a little quicker than punk yeah. i think punk's, you know, punk's still trying to find its identity in, in some ways whereas like metal like we don't have to have a 30 minute discussion about what metal is if we were to do a metal podcast in the same way we shoot have i, I have podcast. friends that would argue that shout out to adam <laughs> yeah but, I, but adam. I, I want to watch the show i guess that's the difference <laughs> uh well so another band at the very top of the iceberg that i wasn't really thinking of but makes perfect sense based solely on a band that i'm fixed to talk about after them the pogues hmm. absolutely hmm. A folk punk band mm. just because they're irish folk punk doesn't mean they're not folk punk and i and i wasn't really thinking about the pogues uh and i'm sure that gives away the uh, band i'm fixing to talk about but like the pogues were big in the mid early 80s all the way through the 90s there's a lot of celtic covers but there were a, there were a they were a punk band just as much as they were a folk band and, and and after thinking about it and googling them and looking up some photos and stuff just to kind of refresh my memory i was like man you know every punker i know every skinhead guy i know listens to the pogues that was the point i was gonna make because like we, we talked about on the news for a name episode where they covered the bone pogue song yeah and it's like kind of every band has a pogues cover and it's what they're one of those bands and there's a this is another thing in punk rock there's a lot of bands that all the punk rockers who made music like but didn't really catch on as punk bands that everyone yeah. within the scene like oh yeah they all love them and like i i almost think of the pogues as more of an indie band and that's not really their lane either but that's kind of where my brain kind of puts them 
in like again not even really a 90s alternative because i consider them more underground than like by yeah. fans obviously like, they're more related to punk i would say it's, but but i didn't really think of folk it, punk in that way yeah i know it's it's strange because a lot of stuff and it's it's fairly subjective man like I, yeah. I would say that me calling them folk punk and then you saying that they're indie neither of us are really wrong it's just yeah. that in this video we happen to be talking about this so genre and they just slide right in dude it was like kind of mm. weird man uh the pogues for anybody that's not familiar like i said they're irish they're a uh a traditional celtic folk band with diy and punk rock roots they do a lot of storytelling a lot of traditional covers and a lot of uh union pro union like if you like billy bragg you probably like the pogues if you like the pogues you probably like billy bragg i know that's kind of a weird thing to make but uh i consider that pretty accurate yeah singer songwriter music with protest tunes yeah very- yeah bob dylan but more a little more punk rock so yeah yeah exactly I, I, I would also put bob dylan in this category to be quite honest mm-hmm. with you that dude's very punk rock or was mm-hmm. whatever you know him. uh and so I'll, I'll actually add bob dylan right here with i was gonna say billy bragg because i was gonna put him next the right below the pogues would be billy bragg i believe he's english isn't he i think so yeah uh very union driven very uh liberal-minded a singer songwriter acoustic singer i mean i like billy bragg quite a bit hell he's mentioned in a rancid song uh went yeah. to his room as much as billy bragg Brad records. Records. yeah so yeah. i mean he's clearly got yeah. some ties to the punk rock scene yeah wrote, wrote songs with anti-flag and yeah <laughs> supposedly i guess i don't remember if that uh, did they did they come out yeah yeah post-war breakout was a song written by billy oh Brad, yeah sure. yeah there's, there's uh, a lot on the terror state that that's written like specifically by, or there's that song and like they talk man. about how they had they had to go and and get permission from his estate even though he was working with them and all that I, mean, I don't want to like i don't want to sidebar too hard here but i hate that we can't even cover that band anymore like i don't want to refer to anti-flag on this channel mm-hmm. anymore like, yeah it sucks dude like because they'd come up so organically and naturally in conversation it's such a part of the like the history of everything. I, yeah. I was watching my old videos. I'm wearing an anti-flag shirt in like half of them. Um, well, you've you've mentioned them in the last three episodes. Yeah. And like and I said, the, organically, it wasn't like you were like, I'm going to mention squeeze this. squeeze them in, yeah. But it sucks, but now it's a word that I hear it and I go, oof. Like it's like a oof word. Like, oh, yeah. like it just, and it, oh. Yeah, and, and it was, sucks because like I have a punk rock, uh, you know, playlist and things on Spotify that I don't control that I just listen to for new music and such. Mm-hmm. And they come on all the time. So I've had to like start like downvoting them. And, yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it sucks because like, I don't really know how to approach it because it kind of just went away a little bit, which oh, I don't back, know is this. It's I don't back today. Oh, really? Go, go to rollingstone.com. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. Well, yeah, well, I'll, I'll just cover that. Let's move on. Yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> an absolutely terrible situation. And uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to have a good time tonight. Although <laughs> there is a, there is a, I don't want to like just rush it under the rug either. Well, like I'm not trying to be like that for anybody that's watching yeah. this going, Oh, you need to, I agree. I need to address it. And, and we, we already have, and I, and I will, and mm. I've learned a lot and, but I I'm still on the team of, I would like a little more information because yeah. an accusation is, 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 is while absolutely serious, it's still just that. And I'm, I tend to believe more of what I heard now than I did when it initially broke. But I'm just, I don't know, man. I, I just, I'm going to cut this out of the video probably. Well, I don't want this then, to be in the... And then to be clear, like I haven't covered it on my channel because my channel's been dead. But you and I have talked about this a lot. So it's not like we have not yeah. discussed this. And then and then to be fair to you too, there's also new information that came to light literally Oh, jeez Louise, so, dude. So, you know, we, we, it, it is best to sort of uh, take uh, a pause. But well, I Well, it certainly doesn't this, sound like it's good. No, no. Uh, and I haven't read the... It's, a, it's one of those long, dense Rolling Stone articles. So I'm kind of waiting to... To read it uh hopefully I, i'm not uh, blocked by the paywall because i've kind of yeah. looked at the, at the top of it a couple of times i well, will say this though i was sort of aware of folk, folk punk by anti-flag though in a lot of ways because they were big boosters specifically chris number two was always a big booster of folk punk and they would, he always talk in interviews about yeah. folk punk and going to see folk punk bands so i think they are relevant somewhat to this to the conversation, to this conversation. Well, yeah i will say it like this uh, um in the in the interest of not being a coward i guess i'll leave this in the video because i don't I, i'm not i'm not a coward and i'm not scared mm-hmm. of a mob um uh, i want truth no matter what that is and i sure hope that the rest of the band gets together and forms something else and continues on 
their journey of what I feel is a very important role in our scene. And mm -hmm. I think that it would show people more um, solidarity with her, excuse me, um, and protest, protest against uh, horrible acts of violence and, and, and scumbaggery, I guess you could mm -hmm. call it. Um, to go ahead and say, all right, man, we're going to, we're going to make this stand here and we're not going to use this anymore, but we're going to continue on because we don't want that. And we need to tell everybody we don't want that around us. I, I hope that's what ends up happening ultimately, but, um, all right, we are moving on now. <laughs> um, okay. So we had Billy Bragg and, uh, Bob Dylan a little bit. Here's one that it, 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 it was a very late addition to my list and it's high up on the iceberg, but I still think it, it could fluctuate because when I tell you who it is, you're going to go, oh, everybody knows him, but not everybody knows that he does this. Tim Timebomb. Very much folk punk. Okay, yeah. If you listen like, to his entire discography, almost none of it's plugged in. Yeah, especially so, that stuff that you like, like that 2012 stuff that he that's did. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. The Tim yeah, Timebomb Tim Time yeah. stuff. Yeah, like not Tim Armstrong, not Rancid, obviously, but Rancid has done a lot of acoustic versions. Mm -hmm. I've been finding a lot of their music online live shows i'll be posting a lot of it here soon um but tim time bomb i think is way up on the iceberg because everybody knows that guy and I'd, I'd say a fair amount of people in the punk rock scene specifically know that he does the acoustic stuff but just under i'm sorry what you have a comment no i was gonna say though um i i feel like maybe because they had the whole acoustic cd a lot of the dominoes era rancid feels a lot like this stuff I feel I like agree. They were, I agree and, with and that. that's when he was writing a lot of that Tim time bomb stuff so that kind of makes sense yep that, that was yeah. just kind of the cuts from there well, a few years ago, I found out that everything that they write, they write it acoustically. Yeah. Like, they uh, write it all acoustically, and then they they basically, uh, what Matt Pless said, I don't want anybody to think I'm just using this dude's terminology and not giving him credit. <laughs> uh, they dressed it up. They they, they had a, a very much a naked song, and they dressed it up. So, <laughs> Tim Time, I'm in Friends, I think is very high on this. But one of the more important bands that I would say is fairly famous but this is when you're starting to get past like the top tier normie stuff where everybody knows it because everybody knows Bob Dylan. Everybody knows the violent films. Everybody knows the Pogues, really. If you go around asking folks, especially, uh, I don't know, boomers, a lot of them know the Pogues, 80s, dude. 80s people. Like just yeah. people, people who would have done a podcast in the 80s. Like that right? perfect person. They yeah. all know those guys. But right underneath them, folks our age, we all know against me and this is where i'll start showing uh vinyl <laughs> i don't have anything particularly special but uh, my my against me records i have a couple of them but this one is uh this is the coolest one that i got because of how i got it i i was real fortunate to find it at a used place for real real cheap and they didn't they didn't know that it was a a gym a classic they were like whatever this looks stupid and they just said yeah. like five bucks and i was like i'll take that <laughs> um but yeah against me and uh I have a little bit of stuff written down there there. Uh, this is where I'm going to start having more information is, is from here on down uh, against me. They're most known for their albums. They have a trio of albums that I think are pretty popular. They've got reinventing Axl Rose, that one. Mm. Then they had one called uh, searching for a former clarity that was really big, but then they really popped with new wave and uh, they've got the songs pints of Guinness make me stronger. Uh, I was a teenage anarchist. Rash Unreal. There's so many good songs that they've got. I'm going to add a bunch of them to the uh, Punk Rock Review playlist on Spotify. I have to add like 80 songs tonight, so I have a lot of work cut out for me. But Against Me is a band that I that's really important to me. Uh, they're a groundbreaking band for many reasons. Not, not the least that uh, they were the first person I ever had anything to do with that was a uh, transgender person. Mm -hmm. uh, Laura Jane Grace is their lead singer formerly known as... Um, Crap. Can't remember the name. It was on Gable. the tip of my Tom tongue. Gable. Yeah, Tom, Tom Gable. Gable. So formerly Tom Gable, Laura Jane Grace. Uh, so groundbreaking band for many, many reasons, but a band that has a very unique sound. And when they toured, they plug in now, but when they toured, when I first saw them way back when they were doing this reinventing Axl Rose stuff and uh, the Eternal Cowboy, dude, they were very much playing on acoustic instruments, driving around in a hatchback. And so mm -hmm. against me, as I would say, like, probably the gateway folk punk band mm. well there might be one more that's like maybe the one really but like yeah i don't know dude when you get to against me and then you start going down the list man you start 
dude, I'm telling you, you'll fall into a hole real quick. But I know the band you're gonna you're gonna mention, and oh, yeah. I think against me is more in line with the deeper parts of the iceberg than the band you're gonna like. They most I think they more closely mirror that sort of uh spirit of of not and they're truly a band, but with the way Laura Jane does that vocally, and like you you need that in folk punk because you don't have all the other helps coming yeah. at you. So you have to well, create these things instrumentally with your voice and and with the acoustic guitar. The band that I'm fixing to mention, I think, might actually be the one. But I think against me is like, we'll get you to the one I'm fixing to talk about. So I guess they're technically the the gateway. But uh, against me is a very important band. Do you do you 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 appreciate that band? Huh? Yeah, you like yeah, the- yeah. I I do. I'm I'm not as big a fan as you are. Oh, I'm a just, huge fan. They're like a top ten band for me. They're just and for me, they're just they're just a band that. I'll never, and I have owned their albums. I'm not real. I'm not big on buying their albums, but like when they come yeah. up on the playlist, like yeah, we're we're Teenage Anarchist comes up. We're 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 not changing that song, yeah. um, or or really anything else they do. And and they're really captivating as a band um, with presence. I, I think they are a, a band that can get performance onto record, which is a very unique thing to do, and they do that very yes. well. They do. They had that uh that uh, song Thrash Unreal that I mentioned a minute ago mm-hmm. is like a top three song of all time for me. I will sing that song all day. Dude, I cry when I hear that song very regularly because it's so personal. The lyrics hit so close to home for me. It's it's a, I mean, if you haven't heard Thrash Unreal people, go out there and listen to that song, dude. It'll 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 mess you up. If you've had any kind of issues with uh, addiction or anything like that, boy, I tell you, man, uh, Against Me is an amazing band. And I want to just... Uh, Sidebar here, real quick. They're not as as high up on this list, but they came around at the same time, and they very ha- they have a very similar sound. It is a band called American Steel. You ever heard them? Mm, I, I've heard that name. Why do Why do I know that? I love that band. I don't know, but I love that band, dude. They are amazing. They sound very very similar to Against Me. Let me see. I can't remember my my memory problems really messed me up a lot. Give me one second. Well, and then to your point though on Against Me and what we're talking about here is you mentioned like the country connection and. Like that's the thing with country music is that the root of country music is folk music and folk rock. Yes. It really wasn't Southern music. That is more of the rock and roll and blues influence coming into country and what it has become now. And I think I agree. It's, 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 so it's similar to the quest of punk, but we think of punk is more stopping at like the 1950s where right. folk punk just takes it a step further and goes back to the forties, thirties and twenties of, uh, of music. Agreed. Agreed. Let's see here. Uh, I'm look. I was listening to you, so I wasn't typing because I wanted to pay attention. So give me one second. I'm looking up American Steel because uh, there was also a band called the Murder City Devils that I think is like adjacent yeah. to folk punk, but not really. Um, but I heard about them all at the same time. Against me, American Steel, Murder City Devils, uh, and these these have a important part of my life in my like late teens, early twenties. That's what it was. Destroy their future. Jagged Thoughts. Rogues March. Rogues March came out in 1999. Jagged Thoughts was like two or three years later. Those two albums are like, bro, I don't know, man. Those are like the kind of records that you say, man, let me think about something that really affected me in my life. And you, and you take the first five or ten things that you think of and set them aside. When you get down past that top layer, that's where this stuff comes in. I go, oh, that's right. American Steel, that band really. I have deep, deep memories of like my first love, dude. Listen to this band. Let my first time I ever wore a leather jacket. This dude named Mike that I met uh, that, that got me into a lot of this stuff. I'm telling you, bro, American Steel. Anyways, let's move on. I could uh, jibber jabber forever about them, but go check out uh, Rogues March, Jacket Thoughts. And then about five years later, they did an album on uh, Kylie. What label was that? It's called Destroy Their Future. Also, really, really good. Similar trajectory is against me on their sound, too. They had like similar sounds when they started, and it, at this different peak, like 27. 27- 2007, 8, 9, they had the same kind of sound with like the off time drum. It was weird how they did it. it was mm. I don't think it was on purpose. They just mirrored each other very well. So, mm. well, and, oh, and before you move, on, did you ever get the right. vibe, dude, that the like the folk punk thing, I feel like popped almost after like the main glow of what everything we talk about, where it just kept going and the folk punk bands like kept touring and they were still going and like they were Wait, not what? like, don't you feel like these bands were never affected by any trends within punk rock at all? And they, um, they are, they're like on their own plane. I feel like the, the the folk side of it just has always sort of continued on its own without. Yes and no. And I think that the reason that is true is because of exactly what you're saying. It just didn't have a, a, a ceiling, except that it did. Like they only have a certain degree of mm-hmm. like popularity that they'll ever get. 
but there's always going to be crust pump kids. There's always going to be a need for music that you don't have to plug in. And mm -hmm. so for that reason, I think there will always be folk punk. But I mean, nah, dude, it didn't even have this like real resurgence or a resurgence or whatever. It didn't really come around until like 2010, 11, 12. And then it just kind of hung around. Right, it was, which it was it was after the stuff we usually talk about. Yeah, right? and, and that was yeah, that was my point with that. It really was after the the and all of this stuff was around back then too. And it just, um, I feel like there was there's a certain consistency to it because it doesn't trend follow, so it, well, it kind of can stay. I feel like it wasn't a genre until like 2000. And we're we're about we're almost we're almost at the point where I'm going to tell you this is where it peaked and this is what made the explosion happen. We're mm -hmm. almost there. Before we get there, though, there's one more band that was birthed by a band I previously mentioned, and I was—I almost put them above against me. I was like, really, kind of—they're more of a, on a level playing field. But Flogging Molly, yeah. Flogging Molly is absolutely—I think that's what you thought I was talking about earlier, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Not, no, they're not the gateway band I was talking about. But the next band will be. So Flogging Molly came out in like '97, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, they're most known for their two albums, uh, Swagger, and then. Uh, after that, Drunken Lullabies. I would, I, I would think that Lullabies is probably the bigger album. I personally prefer Swagger, but I I, I don't usually do this. I'm going to take credit for this, bro. I was in the Flogging Molly before anybody in Houston, Texas was in the Flogging Molly, bro. <laughs> I saw them with nobody there. Um, I took their CDs to my high school, and then all of a sudden, boom, everybody I knew was loving them. And uh, I'll take credit for that in a good way. Like, I'm so happy that I was able to spread some of that around back then because I didn't gatekeep back then like I do now. I'm a turd now. When I was young, <laughs> I wanted everybody to listen to my favorite bands because I wanted my favorite bands to make money. It'd be big, yeah. Um, yeah, I, whenever you you text me the list and, like, fly, I was like, oh, that's folk punk? Like, because I, I understand that they are slightly different than all the other punk I listen to, but I so categorize them no different because they just come up in the mix of the no effects and the right. rag wagons and, and, well, so that's, and all that them. was kind of my point though so does against me because back yeah. then there wasn't a folk punk genre it was just these are punk bands but back then we called it acoustic punk like mm -hmm. if you really want to get into it dude hot water music started this stuff too because yeah. of chuck reagan so uh -huh. like chuck reagan is somebody that needs to be mentioned on this at, at some point here but uh, Flog and Molly definitely needs to be mentioned. They're way up on the iceberg. They're not quite middle of the. They're not quite in the middle of it yet. They're above the the, the top half. Um, but I wanted to mention a couple of songs. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm gonna say, they're, and they're probably more popular than we and punk give them credit for. Um, oh, they're like I, worldwide, dude. They're huge. Yeah, I I tend to talk to people, and like we have nothing to talk about. Maybe like Celtic music will come up, and I'm like, well, I like this band. You look at the song. What's left of the flag? Well, and they know the song. And, and I've had that conversation several times. So I think because of their slight differentiation from punk, they are a little bit more known outside of just. Plus, they got, punk they got a head start on all this other stuff, though. It's like because back mm -hmm. when I first saw them, they were just like all these other bands I fix and talk about. They were just a bunch of broke kids playing music on cheap, shitty instruments mm -hmm. like they were absolutely the same as these other bands I'm fixing to get into, but there's a couple of songs. You know what? I'm going to ask you that. Like I'll, I'll tell you my songs as well, but what are some of your favorite Flog and Molly songs? So just off the top of my head, uh, yeah, Selfish, just a couple selfish man, drunken lollipops, uh, what's left of the flag. Um, I, I named all the popular ones. <laughs> I was, well, I was going to see if you named the ones I had written down. Cause none of those were written on my right, page. Which, which ones did you have written down? Let me, let me do the some two that I have written down are if I ever leave this world alive. Okay. Yes. There you go. And the worst day since yesterday. That one, I kind of not recall that one. I, I mean, I know if I ever. It's on Swagger, dude. It's huh. the worst day since yesterday. Dude, it's such a good song. Oh, just, just talk about having a bad day, bro. It's like, it's such a great, like, punk rock song, dude. It's mm -hmm. so good. But Flog and Molly, uh, I think, is like at the very bottom of the top half of the iceberg. Although they have 1.1 million Spotify listeners. That's crazy, dude. Mm -hmm. And they're still they're still around. Uh, I remember during the pandemic. Uh, oh, yeah. They're they, on tour right his now. wife would do streams from like their basement. That's and awesome. Just, and just uh, pick up all kinds. Of, there's somewhere in my computer that's that it's I was supposed to release it on St. Patrick's Day two years ago, and I missed the timeline. And it said the best punk song you've never heard of with a question mark. And it's got Dave with his, it was going to be on what's left of the flag. Cause I just, I absolutely love that song. Like if yeah. last, last week I talked about linoleum would be like on my top 10 non-negotiable punk songs. Okay. What's left of the flag would also be on that list of just songs that just like that song comes on. All right. We're not talking for the next three minutes. Cause I'm going to do <laughs> the rosary beads go to one, two. And I'm just doing the whole thing. Cause that's, that's a good song. I love that song. And I love, that was I love, a little, 
a little played out for me. It, it is, and it's because it, it is like sort of in, in the in the underground mainstream, which is what I kind of deal with. I think like the the top of the underground, it is yeah. sort of like a a hit in that in, in a pot, and like it's a song you would expect them uh, to play. right. Yeah, no, if they don't play it on a show, people are gonna be pissed. <laughs> What's the one? Uh, and I mean, like with his eyes, it's with his last hit seen, all to be seen. That's the one he says about his dad that I start crying. Yeah. And listening walk to. away, me boy, walk away. Yeah. Or no, that's that's no, that's the flag. Yeah, on. I'm, I'm yeah. reading two songs, but yeah, I can't remember. It's been a while since I've listened to them, but I will be going back and listening to them now because I need to put some stuff on the playlist. But this is right where, in my personal opinion. The iceberg hits the water. All right. Mm. Before I go to that, I'm gonna look up the what was it called? The uh, what was the tour it was called? It was called the, the Chuck Reagan did the uh, the one with, oh. uh, with against me and um, yeah, what was that tour called? The, I don't know. The, 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 was it the dude from H two O too, or or was that? It was like Ben Nichols, uh, Chuck Reagan. Let's see. Chuck Reagan, Ben Nichols. Well, uh, I think. Oh, my goodness gracious, dude. Anyways, they did a tour together with the singer of Against Me. And I think they even had Frank Turner on that tour. Mm. And I want to just shout that out because that happened at like right before all this other stuff happened. They were around before any of this other stuff that I'm fixing to talk about right now. So mm -hmm. shout out to those guys that did this tour. I wish I could remember the name of it, man. Somebody in the comments will let me remember, let me know. But I, I hung out with Ben Nichols and traded hats with the guy on the, at that show. Uh, yeah, dude, I wasn't even in a Frank Turner until that show. So like that was a really important. I used to have the poster, man, but I lost it in the flood. Oh, come, do, do, do we consider Frank Turner folk punk? Would, uh, yeah. Would yeah. Yeah. And Lenny Lashley for to a certain degree. Yeah, because so I, I like like is it acoustic punk or is it folk or is there a line? Like, what is the what is the line between acoustic punk? Um, and folk punk? I think they're pretty interchangeable. Uh, if you said something was acoustic punk to me, I would just be like, oh, okay, folk punk. Because uh -huh. I mean, I think that uh, I think folk punk swallowed the acoustic punk subgenre. Mm -hmm. It is no longer a thing. It is just folk punk, and there's just subgenres of that now. Well, to your point, in the late, like the late 20, uh, 2000s and early 2010s, a lot of these guys, you know, like the touring scene was kind of dead. So you had to tour yeah. smaller places and maybe, you know, you and your band, you, you didn't want to deal with each other's drug problems for the 15th tour. And right. a lot of these guys just went with their acoustic guitar Dude. and played shows. And some of it was, oh, it was amazing. Was punk songs, you know, on acoustic. But like that, that's also part of why we're talking about this time period where this got a little bit bigger, I think. Well, there's also... Uh, parallel to this, there's also a uh, saw wheel from, I think Austin has a really good record out. And then there's also a dude named Scott H Byram. They also call him the dirty old one man band. And he played in Austin. He was literally a punker that played everything by himself. He played a harmonica guitar, sang it at a kick drum all by himself. <laughs> that dude was, was punk rock as fuck. And he was a, he was a, so if you hadn't heard Scott H Byram, go listen to, uh, Graveyard shift, uh, graveyard shift is the one I like. It's, uh, I sleep all day and I drink all goddamn night. It's uh, right. <laughs> yeah, the words I don't even like to say, but it just got kind of came right out. Anyways, we move on. Like I said, this is the this is a messy video. My apologies, everybody. This is where the ice bar hits the water, bro. This is the gateway folk punk band. This is when you've put in some time. And you've listened to Against Me a little bit. You've done some Tim Time Bomb. You've done a little bit of the Pogues. You've liked Blog and Molly quite a bit better than the Pogues. And then somebody goes, have you ever heard of Days and Days? And you go, no, what's that? And you go, oh, it's this group of stinky kids from Houston that play uh, unplugged punk rock. And then they go, oh, that sounds cool. And then you hear it and you go, oh, yeah, my life has changed. And then all of a sudden <laughs> you're, you know, you got your septum pierced. Your hair is four different colors. And you're awesomer. Than you were the day before. That's right, awesomer. So days and days is, in my personal opinion, the gateway to true folk punk music. Um, they have a subgenre created called thrash grass. It's like really fast bluegrass. I like that name. I think it's great, and they are the best at it. I got some of their stuff on vinyl, but I wanted to show this one, everybody, because I told you guys I, I went and took my daughter to their show and they signed the album for me for my daughter. Nice. Yeah. So shout out to these dudes for being super, super cool 
and very accommodating for a young lady to come in and watch their band play. Uh, days and days are the ones that are on the side of the screen where Rob's at. They're from Houston, Texas. They play really fast, basically bluegrass music sped up and they got a washboard. They used to have a, uh, like a tub bass, but they got an actual bass now, I believe. And they got a horn. Like, I think they're like the, probably the most different sounding out of all the bands that I could think of. They have like mm-hmm. the most shit going on. Well, mm-hmm. not the most, not, not the most, but they're, they're like, as far as the popular bands, they do. Most of these bands are like an acoustic guitar and a couple of singers and maybe a snare drum or something. But yeah. These they, dudes have they, a whole thing going on. They really are a gateway too, like you said, because like whenever you told me about that show you're going to, I'm not even, you You were talking to me about like, you're going to a folk punk show. And I'm like, no, you're going to go see a Fat Records band. You're like, no, I'm going to go see a folk band. And it's like, because they are kind of in the, in the way that like Floggy Molly was, but I think they're more identifiable as like a folk punk band than like Floggy Molly. I never thought of Floggy Molly as a, as a folk punk band until you texted to me like a day ago. Yeah. And I think well, Days and Days has that more on lock, you know? Yeah. And, and, and they are a fat band now, but their, their first record, the one I just showed you, it wasn't on fat. Mm-hmm. uh their second one their other one's called uh show me the blueprints that one's on fat and i think they have a new record being written right now but they've got a couple of songs that are just i mean they're humongous songs misanthropic drunken loner and uh my darling dopamine they've got a few more that are really really popular but these have like millions and millions of streams so i'm really proud that they're from houston dude. I, I love that band and i i love everything that they put out I think they're great. Jesse's awesome. Shout out to Jesse uh, for doing the show as well. He's one of my early guests on the show outside of Rob. So, um, yeah, dude, days and days, bro. Absolutely just very influential, dude. Like, they were the first ones that when it – do you remember when they came out, like, when it, with that misanthropic drunk, drunken loner song? Mm-hmm. And they just, like, blew up, and then all of a sudden – Everywhere you turn with some kid on a train track singing a song with acoustic guitars. Yeah. Like Days and Days really were like the catalyst to this explosion of folk punk that I, in, in, from my perspective and my, 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 you know, point of view, if, if, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. I'm not trying to be rude and discount anything that anybody else did, but uh, there were people that came before them. But when they came out, bro, they blew this shit up and days and days i think is probably the most important band in the genre yeah well and they hit right at that time the early 20 teens kind of like what we're talking about so right when this would have been popping and and like i said earlier it's like their identity is much more tied in with it i think than a lot of other bands that's why you know yeah. it's kind of it's kind of like like i said like then i was like metallica it's literally in the name metal and i think days and days is kind of similar where yeah everything about them is is very full funky and the way they they sort of uh fly that well, that's, flag. that's why they blew up it, it, they, they, they. I know a lot of people that tell me that they're the first band in folk punk. I'm like, bro, there's bands on this list that are just as folk punk as it that came out five years before. Like, they weren't the first, but they definitely did it in a way that captivated the audience. And they get a lot of hate and get called a lot of names, and I think that's really stupid. It stems from jealousy, I would imagine. If you hate Days and Days, um, if it's a personal reason because you had a personal interaction that didn't go your way. I can't discount that. That is definitely, right. you know, but if you don't have that, then I don't want to hear it because it's stupid. Yeah. And I think though, too, it's, it's funny because like you're saying back in the day of the time we talk about, I don't think people were like, I don't feel like people weren't actively into folk punk in the same way people will kind of fall into it, you know, or it didn't be, exist like it does. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And I think that's why it's kind of weird when, when people like our age kind of talk about it because it is, it's the one thing we talk about. that's like newer. Like, yeah. Like pop punk is older than this stuff. If you think about yeah. it, even though this looks so much older and, and more ratty. Well, yeah. Yes. And no, I talk a lot about a lot of new music on my channel. You, you specifically like to stay in like, I'm like 94 to like 2004. Like that's your, yeah. Yeah, that's your, that's like your decade, decade and a half. I like to span. Actually, I go about as far back as you go. And then I go all the way current. I don't really know any eighties and nineties, uh, seventies stuff very much. Occasionally eighties, somewhat seventies, very rarely. Um, in 2016, though, there was another band that came out, and I remember this because I was getting sober at the time. Or I was sober by then, but I was like still trying to. I wasn't going to shows or anything. Yeah. There's a band kind called of, Do What? I say you're kind of learning it, learning the new life, kind of. Yeah, I was like relearning how to be an adult. And there's a band called Bridge City Centers that came out. I've never liked their name because it's hard for me to say it, but their music is wonderful. And they're more of like a, uh, gypsy. They're more like uh, Gogo Bordello. Mm. That's another band that fits in this category to me. Yeah. Gogo Bordello. 
Um, but like, uh, there's like this like gypsy punk, pirate punk for a while that I think fits the mold of folk punk pretty well. Mm-hmm. But Bridge City Centers, it's got this young lady that sings, and she's a wonderful front woman. Uh, but I remember I thought, oh man, she's very, very pretty. And then, and she was kind of a, you know, vivacious, curvy woman. And then, like, fast forward a couple of years, dude, and she's just like lost all this weight. And they got this huge audience now. And I was like, I didn't even recognize them when I saw them a picture. I had to read the name. I was like, oh, that's the same people. But, uh, <laughs> dude, I don't know. I just thought it was really cool, man. I, I, I guess she worked really hard at that. I just wanted to, to you know, make a point to congratulate her on, on her journey. I know that's a lot. I'm working on the same thing right now. It's very difficult to get healthier. Uh-huh. I'm hoping that's what it was. Uh, hoping. I don't, I don't know her personally, so I don't know. But Especially in a band. Like, that's yeah. 10 times harder in a band. Yeah. Agreed. But they're more of a, yeah, like, gypsy is the only word I could think of because they, they, they fit the mold. They look like it. They sound like it. They talk like it. They're like, their, their music's much more dark. It's much more, uh, what's the dude that, uh, Sweeney Todd, they feel, they feel very Sweeney Todd, dude. They're like violent and almost demonic. Uh, yeah, well, I think it's hard to not categorize old weird punk into folk punk, right? That's kind of, you have to make sure you're not, because just because it's like odd or weird, it's not necessarily folk punk. And I think that's kind of what you're establishing here is folk folk punk as a more specific genre yeah 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 yeah. there's lots of weird folk uh excuse me a lot of weird punk out there that doesn't fit the mold Mm -hmm. um you know the 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 main criteria is like unplugged music is is Mm -hmm. the real the focal point of folk punk in my opinion um but they've got a couple of songs called rich man which is wrath good grief sorry and uh (laughs) St. James Infirmary that are both pretty good that I've heard quite a lot. The Witch's Wrath is the one that I think I heard first. But that band's really great. I like a lot of folk punk because it's a lot of uh, queer music, a lot of female-fronted music, and I like mm-hmm. that. I like the variety of it. I'm a big proponent for like female-fronted bands. I really enjoy ladies' vocals more than men mm-hmm. almost, you know? I agree, yeah. But, don't, have, uh, don't have as big of a selection, you know? In, I know, right? Well, that's thing. what I love about this subgenre is that there's so much of it. Yeah, and a lot of females within the bands, too like not well, just that's what not, that's yeah that's what i'm yeah, saying and like, not, not, not just not just it's a, a very thing. diverse scene. yeah i i think well you know like and and no disrespect to great Gwen stefani amy interrupter uh brody all of them those are absolutely front women though like those would be yeah. front women in any genre like they are attractive women who are very talented um and i'm not saying i'm not questioning their punk credentials or anything i'm just saying like yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they are front women Sorry, Tim Armstrong is the front man, also the, in the same kind of way. Whereas you just get women in folk punk that are just, they just like to play the banjo. You know? Dude, there's, <laughs> it's awesome, dude. Uh, they're not everywhere. You don't get that regular punk rock, but what I'm saying is it's just. Not to the degree you do in folk punk. There's a lot of it in folk punk. Yeah. yeah. There's, I mean, there's so many, so many uh, people from from this subgenre that are of all different shape sizes. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, it, gender uh, there's a lot of like and... there's a lot there was a lot of uh transgender uh involvement uh gender fluid queer like i said it's it's a very diverse group of people and that's one of the things that i love so much about it is that mm-hmm. you get there's no there, i don't know it's, it's so far it feels to me like the most wholesome and the most welcoming version of the genre that i love i feel like that's what it's kind of that's what the progression is is that it just opened it up and it got it's so honest. It's just acoustic instruments, somebody with throaty vocals, and then who gives a shit what you look like and who you love? Is your song good? Okay, you're welcome here then. Yeah, you can't hide it. Um, Fat Mike, I, I can't think who it was. He actually signed, him and Aaron signed this like kid, and it was it was a transgender kid who was like 15, homeless in LA, who just could, and it was like folk punk that that they did, did like nine songs. The kid ended up dying like three months after oh. uh, they, they did it. It's like a real street kid. I mean, like, Punk rock to the, to the T. Um, they put it out. I think a nine song uh, EP. I, I wish I could think of it. Mike, Mike likes to 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 discuss a lot. I think he's pretty proud of of the connection. Who? Yeah, I want to figure out who this is. Yeah, and to the story he's telling. Fat Mike did like a like a thirty years of fat uh, stream like during the pandemic, and he he mentioned like his favorite album by every band they ever did, and he brought this one up and I, I wish I could find it exactly because that the music goes exactly full. It's, it's street punk, and but it's not like, it's not casualties. It's street punk in that way. That's literally music, like from the street with an acoustic. Damn, do I have to figure out who that is, man. I don't want to yeah. waste anybody's time while I'm looking through my phone, but I, I'll figure it out eventually. Um, so we're going to go 
just below the surface of the iceberg on the water here. And we're going to go down to one, one of my favorites. But this right here, I think this part of the iceberg, the next three or four bands that we talk about, I got a, a fairly large list here still. So the next three or four that we talk about, I'll make it a little quicker. But I think this is where most of the real folk punk kids, the real crusty kids, say that the real folk punk is. And I think that's silly, but I also get it because I've been there. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to start with April and Apes of the State, dude. Um, oh, and I want to just brag a little bit because this is not cheap. I got a first press of uh, The City Isn't Big Enough. It came in the mail today. I got it. it I Man, I'll tell you off camera what I paid for this. But um, <laughs> I've got some second prints coming in from her that I bought personally that I'm going to put in the shop. So, uh, But Apes of the State, dude. Um, Plate Glass Apology and Sober Intentions are the two songs that got me interested in her music. Or I guess their music, I should say. It's more than one person, I believe. But the album from 2016 is called uh, The City Isn't Big Enough. And it's a like very, very pro-gay lesbian singer. And mm -hmm. her lyrics will uh, attract a very specific yet broad crowd of people. Like I can appreciate it as a straight white guy because they're just great lyrics and great songs. But boy, I tell you, man, if I was a gay kid or a lesbian, I sure would appreciate her music. I would be so thrilled that it existed because uh, it's clear that she wants you to know you're, you're okay. And you're loved and you're, 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 you know, welcome. And, and mm -hmm. it's just such a beautiful uh group of songs it's wonderful I, I really appreciate her she was a lot of help for me uh on my channel and then with this video even throwing me some names and i don't know she's very sweet man april is awesome and that band is great if you like um emo she did a video where she says like there's like this cross section of like folk punk and emo and it's like a gradient right and i think they're like right in the middle where they're folk punk but they're emo and then it gets gradually more folk punk and gradually more emo I, I love that she did that man she's excellent go follow her on tiktok apes of the apes of the state dude excellent 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 uh singer songwriter i i just love the idea of like adam lazara from taking back sunday being homeless suddenly and playing with his get to get tired of me like i love folk. the i love the thought that everybody thinks that folk punk kids are all homeless <laughs> i know i know they're I not right there. <laughs> do what i know like i just did right there yeah like uh <laughs> like because and i also like whenever people go oh man because this is something that happened on my on my tiktok whenever i did like the days and days content oh there's at least two trust fund kids in this group and i'm like first off wrong second you don't know them third so what if there was <laughs> jealousy man it's killer dude jeez uh, he's geez. kid bro you know what Anyways, though okay there, there might be some trust funk kids in a lot of punk rock bands. If you're doing uh, yeah. folk, if you're doing folk punk though, even if you are the trust funk, you're cut off from the trust fund. I'm pretty sure once you decide to do folk punk, once like, your parents smell you and they're like, "Bro, what?" Yeah, no, bro, I just don't understand like why people <laughs> people are like, "Yeah, but they just want to come off like they're da 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 da." Everybody wants to come off like we're da 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 da. That's why we dress how we dress. That's why we put the tattoos on us that's why we do the hair that's why we do the podcast that's why we wear the t-shirts that we all want to project a certain image stop being so angry about somebody else's desire to be loved or appreciated looked at or talked to why do you give a shit like i don't understand why people have such a problem with some kid that has a little bit of money faking the funk like he doesn't who cares bro there's because you have what is the yeah, one would, would you rather him be beaten up like the homeless kids like no, that's the other well, that's like, the other option, right? Like these these, these these angry, stupid people seem to think that money buys you happiness, and it doesn't do that. They just write different lyrics, man. You might be writing about being homeless. They're writing about the fact that they're at home and their parents hate them. Like they, we all have problems, dude. Like I don't know, man. It's an image that they project. Who cares if they? And I'm not talking about anybody specifically. I'm talking about in general people that say that kind of stuff about people. It's so stupid, man. Because. I can tell you firsthand that Days and Days isn't that, okay? But I'm talking about in general. And you see that every time you see a folk punk in a video or a crust band, that's what you hear is you hear, oh, they're just faking it. If everybody's faking it, then what are we talking about? It's not fake anymore. Stop it. it oh, man. I'm going to rant over with. I'm done. Yeah. 
Uh, agreed. Agreed. Underline everything you said. 100%. Um, okay. Here's one that is going to people probably waiting on me to talk, waiting for me to talk about. Uh, there's three bands here, but it's like two dudes have a lot to do with both of them. So I'm going to try to just wrap this one up. This is a Mischief Brew slash Pat the Bunny slash Wingnut Dishwashers Union. This is the one that is probably my, my second favorite. Like it's like Days and Days and then Pat the Bunny. Like it, I can't, ex everybody will agree with this. This dude is amazing. And he's no longer even making music. Even Chesky from uh, Codependence is good friends with the guy. Like this dude has changed a lot of lives. Uh, R.I.P. Eric Peterson. He was the singer for Mischief Brew. Um, died in July of 2016, I think. I believe it was self-induced. Um, you know, my condolences to his friends and family. Uh, but he had a song called Coffee God and Cigarettes and Thanks Bastards with Mischief Brew that are both just absolute stellar songs and stand out. But it's more of a... Um, this is more of what I would think of as, as traditional folk punk. It's not as fast as Days and Days. It's acoustic guitar, a little bit of a little bit of sometimes as a bass, sometimes it's plugged in even a little bit. Um, but it's very political, very street. Uh, it's dude, if you haven't heard this stuff, go listen to them. Cause uh on the same token, man, Pat the Bunny has an album called Probably Nothing, uh, possibly everything. I actually have a copy of that. Let's go. I'm a nerd. Okay. Pat go. the Bunny LP. This is, I would imagine, pretty sought after. Um, you can tell how important this music is to people when they have stuff like three hundred dollar records sitting in front of them. Like I, I don't, I don't blow my money. I save it fairly, like, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. This stuff is pretty important to me, and it's because the lyrics are so amazing, dude. Uh, Pat the Bunny. I believe that him and uh i think eric and him did johnny hobo and the freight trains so that band also needs to be mentioned johnny hobo and the freight trains and then wingnut dishwashers union uh have burn the earth leave it behind for 2016 and i've got one that's not even opened and people are like well why don't you open it dude it's like 400 bucks i'm not opening this like yeah. there's just no there's, and it's a perfect record dude this album like that is an album you need to go listen to on on Spotify right now, and all that stuff is in the same group of people. Wingnut, uh, Mischief Brew, Pat the Bunny, Johnny Hobo, all like the same. Pat the Bunny is really the, the catalyst to all that stuff, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, he's got a song called I'm Not a Good Person from 2014. It's amazing. He's also got Urine Speaks Louder Than Words. Um, I can't explain to you how good that song is. Just go listen to it. He's got one called Fuck Shit Up, Wana Na. Listen to that. And then Jesus Does the Dishes. This dude's music is so crazy. And the thing is, is like he was like an anarchist punk street kid, right? Ha going all over the country, playing this acoustic guitar, screaming his little heart out. And then one day he just woke up and was like, nah, I'm, I'm over it. Like, do you know anything about this guy? No. I mean, I, I've heard of the wingnut dishwasher unit, but I didn't know. Bro, so he just stopped it abruptly one day. He just decided he didn't believe in what he was preaching anymore. And now he's like a, a, a he like does coding and, doesn't own a TV apparently. Like he's just, yeah. Like he's like he did like a whole entire like 180. And I don't even have a problem with that. Some people might. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think you do whatever you want. There's nothing more punk rock than waking up every day and knowing that you're doing what you want to do. Like, yeah, it feels it feels very honest. It feels like yeah, you'd be and, selling out if you're doing the same thing just to please other people. Just just to please other people. I agree. I'm so glad that we agree on that, man. Because I do the things that I want to do, and I'm very proud of what I do in my life. I'm very proud of like my kids, my little label hanging out meeting you like dude i'm proud of this stuff man we work hard um okay so that's like beneath the surface a fairly large chunk and then i'll wrap this up here in a minute and we'll figure out another topic for next week but there's a couple other bands that i want to just mention there's uh these are bands that i'm just starting to uh, uh to get into and 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 learn about so again if i miss any bands my apologies but we have sister wife sex strike i don't know what their gender is so i'm not gonna I, I i only mentioned that because i thought one thing and then i heard them talk their voices have changed quite a bit so i don't know what to refer to them as so i don't want to be disrespectful but their music is amazing dude those people are awesome their music is so good so go check out sister wife sex strike uh the songs that i would recommend are 
simply nothing specifically and then uh barefoot dirty and free those two songs bangers bro you'll really like it uh pigeon pit i've only heard a few times um i was recommended them from april of uh apes of the state and then uh april's other band local news legend which i gotta just say dude that name <laughs> that is a fantastic band name dude <laughs> local news legend that's just such a good name bro uh then there's two more blackbird rom which is more of a they sound more like the bridge city centers they're more of like this gypsy like traveling type of sound uh and then shout out to matt pless who i had on the show like i said earlier this dude writes incredibly intelligent songs with fantastic lyrics they're all catchy they make you think um i think folk punk is a very good genre of music and i love it what are your thoughts well i think you just you have to be a good songwriter in this genre like bar yeah. none because you don't have the other things to to keep you up so you have to be able to kind of hold attention Agreed. Uh, with that and like it's it's almost we talked about all this punk purity and i'm glad that we're both not into punk purity but if there's any such thing as punk purity it's folk punk like if there's anything that lives to the ideals Wait, that we're always gonna what's, what's what's punk purity? I'm just saying, like the as you were saying, as you say, like with DIY life and li like as bare bones and the, like all that stuff that we all kind of espouse. But at the end of the day, we are kind of into the Hollywood idea of punk rock in a lot of ways. Whereas folk punk really is Wait, like. What are you talking about? I don't know that I agree with that statement. Explain so, say it one more time. Okay, so what I'm saying is. That like, yes, we all like sort of profess to agree with the ethos of punk and the DIY nature and the bare bones and the stripped down part of it. But I think ultimately a lot of what we'd like and talk about is kind of the Hollywood, not Hollywood version, because it's not made up, but it's a very, it's an entertainment product in, in, okay. in that kind of way of a lot okay. of I, yeah. I will, I, I will buck back on that one a little bit. I will say maybe you do. I do not. I, I make my I, own shirts. I make my own label. I make my own channel. I make my own living. And, but that's, uh, that's yeah, it's your punk rock. I've said a lot of the punk rock that like we analyze and stuff, I think. Is... Wait, what? No, I'm saying like just the way I live, like the stuff that I love, that's the way that it, okay, I'm, I think maybe I'm confused with what you're no, saying then. No, and, and, and that, that's like the minor part. What, what I'm saying is, is like, I still do view like, um, whether the Fat Mikes and the Tim Armstrongs and those guys, they still are sort of, they're not celebrities in like a movie star kind of way, but they are still... Like there's still something about them that is they are entertainers in that kind of way, and not that this, like folk punk is not entertaining. Yeah, but I think it's very, very much more all the essences of punk rock that we can talk about boiled down to like literally their most stripped down. I think uh, you would be very surprised if you heard some of these people talk that that's not actually actually accurate because they want to do the same things that the Tim Armstrongs are doing. That's mm -hmm. their goals. That their goal is to make a living doing this and and to be as popular as possible because. I know that there's some kids. I, I think the people that don't want that are the people that do stuff like black metal, like those people, because they don't. They only do it for the art, and they don't care if they make any money. They want to assault your ears, like. And I think that some of these folk punk artists, they just want to do music how they want, but they want to be popular. They want to make money. They that's why they put their music on the internet. That's why they go play shows. Um, they just haven't gotten to that point yet. But yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying. I'm not saying that you're completely wrong. I just think that I think you would be surprised. To talk to some of these people, like go listen to the talk what I did with April on April's Apes mm -hmm. of the State because she talks about that a little bit. So, so, and I get what you're saying. So, basically, the way that like Tim Armstrong was able to take ska punk and and like the Clash and all that stuff, and you know, have a career off of it and being like yeah. authority on it, these guys would like to do that. that that's they're fair. all aiming yeah. to do that, and if they tell you they're not, they're full of shit. Every one of mm -hmm. them would love to have a little bit more money, a little bit more security. Um, and and a, and, a, and a lot less problems because let's face it, dude, problems suck. Just because you can get good songs out of them. I haven't written good music in 10 years because I've had a better life. Life's now, could good. I write some, you know, you know what I'm saying? But like, oh yeah, I, I very much am still of that ilk, dude. I still try to, to live that way of life. I practice what I preach as much as I possibly can. Um, actually, I don't even say that. I, I do practice what I preach. I, I, I'm, whole, I'm starting a whole ass, you know, a uh, group of videos showing people how to do the same things. Um, yeah, I think that, I'm much less warped to her punk. Is that that's a good? I think that's a good line. Mm -hmm. There's like warped to her punk's probably about where you sit. I would think like that's the stuff you like the most. I think it's it's, it's a good way to describe what I like. If yeah, and then like like, punk, like a good shorthand for it. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not like the people that play the folk punk where they like the most underground stuff. Some of them like it. I mean, 
Pat the Bunny, he covered a lot of pop music. So I mean, they like, but I'm saying like I'm not quite there because I'm not a musician and I'm not touring and all that stuff. But I think I'm below, just below the the Warp Tour line. I still like a lot of that music. I say most of that music I still like, but I still like yeah. as much music on the other side of that as 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 I do that stuff. And that doesn't get me any kind of points, and it doesn't deduct any points from somebody that doesn't do it. It's just a way to describe what, like, this is where our differences start to happen is that I do lean into the folk punk stuff quite a bit. I like it a lot more than I think you do, I would imagine. I like D-Beat probably a little more than you do. Yeah. Uh, but I've always liked that stuff. Like, I was into that stuff. But when, as soon as I heard it and found it, I, I wanted more of it. So, uh, I mean, hence the, the content, right? Yeah, it's more of like where you're centered at, I think, is, yeah. is what we're talking about. Not necessarily in because like I don't dislike folk punk and I don't dislike the DB, I don't like dislike yeah. the, the crust or any of that, but I am very much situated in that warp tour. Uh yeah. and it's not what necessarily warp tour specific, although it is warp tour specific, but it's that it's those bands that you can kind of say warp tour bands and you kind of know what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. It's like like I, I would say that if you went through each of our record collections, the Boy, I'm making a very presumptuous statement here, so don't take it too personally because I don't I haven't been to your house. But I would imagine <laughs> that I have a more eclectic record collection than you, as far mm. as like just artists. Um, mm. Again, that doesn't mean anything really. It's just conversation. Yeah, but, you're, uh, you're more open minded, to be honest with you, than I am. Okay, and it's it's funny because the old crusty punk is usually the one. Now you're like two years older than me, but you know that's usually no. The but one. I, I do I do know what but you're I, saying. I, though, I, I told agree. you that over I told you that over text a couple weeks ago. Like you're the most open minded old school punk rocker. Like you're the only guy who could I could do a folk punk podcast with and a Blink One Eighty Two podcast with. I'm the same month. I don't and think I love anyone it. else quite exists like that. Yeah. You know it's funny. And I, you know what, dude? I got to hand it to you, man. I I sincerely appreciate you acknowledging that because. I get told all the time, dude, like, you only like what you like, bro. And I'm like, yeah, but what I like is vast. Yeah, like, it's pretty big. You know? Uh, and if you uh, like something, you don't discriminate. That's what I appreciate about you. Like, if you like yeah. it, you like it. You do not yeah, apologize. I, it could be the, the poppiest, most uncool oh, thing. If dude, you like I it, you like it. Love, and I love awesome. Justin Timberlake, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and I like Lady Gaga, Justin Timberlake, Adele. I've got some stuff in my collection that would blow your mind. But uh, I just stopped caring at like age 25 or so. And then I really stopped caring when I had kids, dude. Like I was just like, what do I give a shit what anybody thinks, man? Like I never really did, but I think I did to a certain degree. I don't really now. I, I, I want my friends to like be stoked for me and I'd be sad if my friends were disappointed in me. But outside of that, I don't really have any reason because I think I'm a stand up dude. And like I got my faults. Everybody does. But my faults are things like, oh, I talk too much and I'm a little abrasive at times. But I mean... You can trust me. I don't, you know, I'm sober. I don't do any drugs or lie or steal or cheat. Never did do much of that anyways. But like, I don't, I have a family. I, I, got, I got a growing business. Like, what is there about me that you don't like? Oh, is it because I like people that are different and then you don't? Well, that's a you problem, not a yeah. me problem. And uh, I'm, I'm not perfect, man. I, I need to, I'm still trying to grow. But I, I, I really do appreciate you acknowledging that, man. That it means a lot to me. And I have like the, almost the opposite journey for the same reason, though, in that yeah. like, I was like, because I always tried to, I tried to, and that's why I, I think I know a lot, a little bit about all kinds of different punk rock, but I do have my set. It's like, like, oh, well, I can't just like, like the no effects and the, I got to like the cool stuff too. And, I, and then like, man, you, do, again, nah, you don't have to once, go. Man, once I got to like, like my, once I got to my thirties, I was like, well, first of all, nobody likes this stuff anymore. So I can like, whatever the hell, again, <laughs> I'm a, I got two kids. What the, who the hell do I care about my credibility? If, if I want to listen to punk and drum like over and over and over again. Then I'm gonna listen to you punk should. and drum like over and over and over again. So I, <laughs> so my my close mindedness actually comes from the same impulse of like you know what? Let's just like what the hell we. Like. But at the same time, like I haven't expanded as much within punk. I think as an adult, but yeah. like other genres of music, like you were mentioning, I like when I was a teenager, I definitely had no time if you were into anything that wasn't at least somewhat punk adjacent. And now I'm like, I, I, I can 1 million percent understand. That. I can totally acknowledge. And you know, and you know who listens to all those things you're talking about? All these punk bands, like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. They are, like, can you imagine if Tim only listened to punk? Like how, how boring yeah, he, it no, would be? Dude, that would yeah. blow my mind. He listens to so much music. I feel like I'm more of that kind of person. Yeah. And I think that's what makes good music because it, it would just only reproduce itself. Right. If, yeah. If bands yeah. We get very other. stale very quick. Yeah, and you hear, you know, uh, we talk about Matt Freeman who brings in jazz into it, and Tim Armstrong bringing in uh, very specific types of ska and, and all this, and um, and we we can go on and on with all the different genres that people bring into music, and it's because you were able to kind of discover that or bring it in, or you notice something, or you notice a similarity too. Is the other thing I noticed when I studied. I'm not a musician, but I do kind of know how punk is constructed, and 
basically like every other form of, of music. So it's, you know, it's, if it borrows something from another genre, it's pretty easy to see how it's got genre because punk music at its core is really just basic rock and roll. Just played it. Oh, really yeah. Cool, played really cool by really cool people. It's just, yes, yeah, considerably dirtier. Uh, you know, it's funny is I was I was at the shop and I was unloading all this uh, inventory that I just bought. And I just posted a video of me uh, showing everybody what I bought for the shop. And if you look at it, I literally like 60 percent of what I bought is like your record collection. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's like all this like pop punk and like, metal core. <laughs> it's, it's all like from like 95 <laughs> to 2005 uh, fat and epitaph stuff. And then. You know, like DB takes a certain kind of person because like, well, I think what happened was is that when I was a youngster, I wanted to know like the punkest of the punkest of the punk. And I, and it sounds so silly now, mm. but back then it was so important to me to like listen to like Discharge and a little bit of Doom. Like, and I, and I don't know the songs like I do some of the rants and stuff, but I, yeah. I wanted to know those bands because I wanted to be as punk rock as I could, as I could be, which is funny because if I really look at my, if I was, if I'm honest about it, I didn't really like that stuff back then, but I do now. Like I, I don't understand it. Like I've, I've like regressed almost like I, the stuff I that I wanted to like back then. I just didn't care for it. It was, it was cause there are gateway bands. There's bands that, that like they, they capture the essence of that, but they do it in a shiny way. That's not quite, like grimple. Grimple is like a is like a crust band, right? Mm -hmm. But they have really catchy music, and so I like Grimple, which got me into stuff like Discharge and uh, what is that other one I'm thinking of? Filth and uh, all these these bands that are like, you know, all the cool kids with the real charged up hair and the mm -hmm. gutter punks and shit. They all like this stuff, and I wanted to be more like that. And 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 in my older days, I don't really care because I I've, I've studied it more now, and I I love what I love and. Um, I'm if I'm gonna be honest about it, the stuff I love the most is just the stripped down rock and roll punk, like One Man Army. That's my favorite mm -hmm. music in the whole world, which is one of the reasons why I like folk punk so much because it's very stripped down and raw and honest, and I and I love that about it. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, what is punk to you? You know, it, it can mean a million things, and to some people, it's cool. Some people think it's stupid and corny. Some people think the fact that I'm 41 and I still wear Rancid shirts is ridiculous. Like I've had people tell me, "Dude, you know, I can't believe you still wear that stuff," and I'm like. Well, what else am I gonna wear? Well, man, you gotta wear like a collared shirt and like some pants. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't feel comfortable in that. Like, I'm not, and I'm not talking about physical comfort. I'm talking about like emotional comfort, dude. I don't feel right in that kind of clothing. Mm -hmm. I feel silly in that stuff. I feel like it's a, it's a, it's a costume. You know, I'm like, you know, and I'm, I'm not even decked out in gear. Look at my hair, bro. I have a regular ass haircut. Like, but I don't feel right in a polo shirt and like, you know, chinos. Really, like, I just. I don't know, man. I, I, I feel much more my identity when I'm in public and I'm wearing a punk rock shirt. And I don't know why that, because again, I'm like basically at every other marker, a boring middle-aged dude, but like, <laughs> I'm going to get at a, but like I'm wearing the punk rock shirt and that doesn't make me cool, but it's just something, it's like my thing. I, cause punk rock, even, even like the punk rock that I talk about, it's so like repressed in our society, so to speak of like something that if you know, you know, and sure enough, I get approached with like today. I just went to a place in town with a Hellcat shirt. I was wearing my polo from work um, earlier, but like when I go out, like my outcome, the Wolves shirt, I was out downtown Albuquerque a couple weeks ago. I got stopped like six times with people. Nice. And uh, I wouldn't, you wouldn't think, you know, I'm just wearing a rat's that one guy talked about, I, I buy me with me. And it, you know, oh, I, just, I would just keep going on. I get on. talked about when I wear red rants and shirts, I just happen to be wearing one. So I mentioned that, but like, mm. you know, I, if I wear like a, casual violent shirt from cmi like people don't you know they're like what are you wearing dude like yeah and not, okay let's go even further when i wear stuff like my hoodie that i put all this crap on dude i make them so that i can put them on so that i can look a certain way because that's where i feel comfortable mm. it's funny because even my own people will be like you're too old for that or you're a poser i had like I've had, i had like okay <laughs> when i first started doing youtube i had a different hoodie you're not going to believe this shit. So first off, that hoodie was praised by everybody. People loved that hoodie because I had a no effects patch on one side. And on the other side, I didn't have a leftover crack patch. I had a choking victim patch. And so I got called all the time. I got, it was so funny because people, most people loved it, but there was these like group of people that were like, oh, you're so fucking punk rock. Look at that no effects patch. And, uh, you know, look at how punk rock I am. I like choking victim. And I'm like, what, why are you angry by that? Like, what is, so, what, what makes you so mad? And so, uh, 
I was talking about the hoodie on a live stream, and somebody said, uh, I think they asked me if if I bought it, if I made it. And, and I was like, no, I, I made the patches and I sewed them on. I just, I've always been doing this. And I mean, I have. Dude, I've, I've, every hoodie I've ever had has had patches on it since I was about 14. Mm-hmm. You know, I got, these are all stuff that I, that I, I mean, I don't know how else to say it. Like what's more awesome than making your own stuff and putting it on your clothing, you know? And uh, I guess what I'm getting at is that that, but that hoodie ultimately I was going to buy a new one, which is the one I just showed you. This is like two years ago. And somebody says, uh, I said, I said, I'll tell you what, guys, this is how, this is how long it was. I said, when I hit 10,000 subscribers on uh, 31 TV, I'll give the hoodie away. And I said, the only thing I request in return is a photograph of you in the hoodie so I can post it. And uh, I got lots and lots of comments about it. And so I finally decided on this one girl who was always really nice. She was always on my live streams. And she's like, I really like that hoodie. And she wasn't even asking for it. She's like, I really like it. And I was like, oh, so I, I hit her up and I said, hey, does, would it fit you? And she's like, yeah, why? I was like, then you can have it. And she's like, you're kidding me. I was like, no, just all I want is a, a photograph of you in it. And I'll throw it on Instagram, whatever. That's that's just as like a check it out. Like I, I, I just have this weird thing where I always feel like people don't believe me. And so I was like, yeah. I want to give it away. And I, I don't want people to think I didn't actually give it to anybody. Yeah, and so me. check this shit out though. Like I, I'm so mad about this, dude. I mail it to this girl. The day that I sent her the tracking was the last time I ever talked to her. She never responded to any other message that I ever sent. She never sent me a photo of it. She never even said she got it. She never said thank you or nothing, dude. Mm-hmm. I want that hoodie back so bad, bro. Is that like a the... boyfriend or husband that got the wrong idea of what you were trying to do? Or like, that's it wasn't very hard to figure out, man. I was just a dude on YouTube with a wife and kids that was giving away a hoodie. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I guess it could have been something like that, but I thought it was so, so strange uh, that that this girl was so adamant about liking my hoodie and that I tell her I could give it to her. She's all freaking out saying thank you. And then just nothing, dude. And it's a DIY hoodie. It's not like it was like Sid Vicious's hoodie that she's going to put on eBay or something. No, well, that's the thing is it's got more sentimental value to me than her. So that's why I'm so pissed off because I'd rather just have it. Like if that's what you're going to do, like why can't I just give it to Rob then? Like you'd rock that hoodie. It was an awesome hoodie. But like, dude, there was like 500 kids that would have liked to have that. I was so mad. <laughs> but I got to tell you, so when I was in college, I was always the old man. Uh, and by the old man, like I, was, <laughs> like I was 31 and everyone else was 21. You know what I mean? I was just kind of went to college. Later yeah, oh, life. I, I understand that very and, well. Uh, we had to do a thing where we were doing a, you know, studying of uh, certain political protests and stuff. And we were doing like, can you do a reenactment? And it was about a guy that was uh, like arrested for all his political messaging on his, like his military jacket. And we were oh, like, wow. how are we going to do that? How are we? And I was like, well, I got like three army jackets in my closet. None of them fit me anymore, but they all have very vulgar political sayings on every single one of them. And they didn't believe me. Nobody was like, do you what? really have this jacket? And and so the thing we had to put on there was, I think it was fuck the draft was the actual. I was like, yeah. And the girl was like, oh, I don't want to sew on your jacket. I was like, no, everything on it. Like, do you think the Sid Vicious murder announcement that's on the front of there, you think it'll care about the fuck the draft thing on the back? Right. So I'm going to leave it on there. Like, a, it doesn't fit me anymore. And B, it's because it's more for decoration. And she sewed it on there. Okay. And, and then so the professor asked, So where did you guys get like an authentic jacket? I'm like, Dude, my closet. <laughs> that's awesome. Dude, there's nothing that I like more. Hold on. Uh I love doing this with clothes and stuff. And I just found this yesterday. I was looking for this thing. I thought I lost it when I moved. Um, I don't know. I might give this away too because I want to get another one. I don't know. I, I guess I could show, sew it on my back of my hoodie, but um, I wanted to uh, have the one where the rancid was up across the top. Yeah. Beggars can't, beggars can't be choosers, though. I might just sew it on anyways. I got some... Uh, let's see here. I got... All right. I got a no effects with the red logo that I'm going to probably put on something here soon. Uh, I've got an unseen patch. Are you a fan of the unseen, huh? Yeah, I love the unseen, yeah. Yeah, I'll throw this one in with the other ones I'll send you. Um, Teenage Ball Rocket is getting prepped. So this is how I cheat when I sew my patches on. Uh, you, this is way too much. I don't know why I put this much on the back of this one. I usually use like 20% of this, but I use this uh, adhesive, this cloth. But I just mm-hmm. put it on there so that I can hold it in place because, boy, I tell you, man, holding a patch in place is a pain in the ass. And have you ever sewed one where it had like a bubble in it? 
You know what I'm talking about? I, I don't do the sewing. That's what? <laughs> the sewing. Yeah. I've always what? outsourced. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you can't do that, poser. No, <laughs> yeah, dude. There, there's the poser thing right there. No, Man. I, used to, I used to put the four safety pins on my patch and wear it. There. You, you know, no, that bro, dude, you got to put the <laughs> yeah. work in, man. I'm so sad right now. Oh, bro, what? Yeah. I got a bouncing souls patch that I've had for like, bro, I can't tell you how long I've had this. So long. I bought this so many years ago. Wow. That's crazy. This is actually what I bought. I didn't make that one. Um, and then I bought this one as well. I think I ordered this one on eBay, like before I started screen printing. Uh, okay. I could probably make one of these though. But uh, I got this awesome. I started doing black on red, which I thought came out really nice. Mm. Perfect but, for that for that band too, and that, that right, logo. dude, for sure. Oh. I'm the, flabbergasted the, that you don't sew your patches on. The 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 battle vests are always funny to me too because like it's always a hodgepodge too. Like you're saying how they're uh, they're noticing your choking victim and no effect shirt on the same thing. Like there's always like. Uh, random met thrash metal band on every back <laughs> that you wonder where oh, that yeah, came like from. Municipal yeah. Waste. Yeah, that's always Dude, I, have, I have municipal waste uh that I make on my I have patches for that too. Do you like Screeching mm -hmm. Weasel? Oh yeah. Ramones? Of course. Yeah. Um yeah, dude. Man, I'm I'm still shocked right now that you don't sew your patches on. Like I'm really <laughs> I thought you were just talking shit for a second. No, no, I'm I'm, I'm very bad with it. So I, I love the DIY spirit. I'm the most unhandy man ever, whether it comes to sewing, changing, doing anything. Per, pretty much my vocal cords is the only talent I have in this life is the ability to talk. I am not good at No, nah, bro, I'm not a handy dude either. I just started doing it, man. I'm about to put some shelves on my wall that I made. I actually doing, uh, I actually went and bought wood and made shelving and ordered oh. the brackets and I'm, I'm doing a whole series of videos on this, man. I'm, I'm going to teach these kids how to do stuff for themselves so that they can go out and just do what they want and be happy, man. So many people uh, just don't do that, and it makes me sad, man. Like, we all get told what to do, and it's, it, gets, it, gets, it gets old, man. Mm -hmm. So it's fine what you want to do with your life and just do it. Um, and really, once you commit on that note, too, like, I mean, you and I have basically full recording studios in our houses. That yeah. we, we don't live in recording studios, but it's that. That kind of thing, man. You can figure it out. You just have to sort of. Well, I mean, we kind of do. I spent a lot of time in this room. And I'm sure you spent a lot of time in yours. I mean, I do live in this studio. You yeah, know, but, I, but it, was, it wasn't purpose built. As a, it's not like you. Went oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Studio. yeah. No, dude. I, and, I, and the thing is, is that over the past three and a half years, I have transformed from having a little bitty camcorder with no microphone to having what I have now, and I've spent a lot of time and money on it, but. I would absolutely recommend that you you dip your toe in first. Don't just dive in the deep end of any any hobby. You'll you'll end up wasting a lot of money and time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, uh, man, learning like how to do it. stuff is awesome and very useful, man. I I just said screw it and I bought some tools and started learning how to use them. That's that's what that's how I learned how to do it. The sew the patch thing on, bro. All it takes is needle and thread. How you gotta be a handyman to do that? I don't know. So last time I tried to do it, the other sleeve was sewed into. The <laughs> what, dude? What? I don't know. I don't know, dude. I can't do it. <laughs> Bro, dude, look. You lay it on your lap flat. All right, guys. We're going to have a tutorial very soon for this. You know? You're going to send it to me. At, I'm going to get a first look. Patreon first look at that one. <laughs> I'm like, all right, Rob. I need you to watch this video right here specifically. Uh, that's awesome, though. That's funny. I like that you would, that you said it, though, that you're, like, open about it. Because I think that also counts for a lot. It's not being afraid to be your own in oh. your own skin. Yeah, I always saw it on my patches. What are you talking about, bro? I, I mean, that would that okay. <laughs> me calling you a poser a minute ago was like in jest, but that is the definition of being a poser is telling me that you do right. that while you don't do that. Yeah. And me not, not telling you, me over here going, yeah, Pigeon Pit. I just heard about these guys. It would be so lame if I was like, yeah, Pigeon Pit is like one of the most underground bands, blah, 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 blah. And I don't know that, dude. I just discovered them. Like, <laughs> I'm on this journey with you guys, man. I'm not over here trying to fake the funk. Yeah, and you guys, you guys know that you guys know the difference if you're watching. You, even even if you don't know the specific, you could tell when someone's BSing and someone's talking. Oh, dude, it should be pretty obvious. I I know I'm a terrible liar, so like, yeah, I dude. <laughs> somebody at work the other day told me that they were like, I I was trying to fool somebody. I was messing with them, and I said whatever it was I said, and they were like, "Are you serious?" And I was like, "Yeah, bro, for real." And they were like, man, I don't believe you, dude. You're a terrible liar. And I was like, no, bro. And I was trying to be real serious. They're like, you're absolutely lying right now. I was like, dude, how the hell did you know that? They're like, 
it's just something about you, man. Like you're just like this kind of carefree dude. And when you're trying to convince somebody of something, it's obvious. And I was like, oh damn. So good, I thought, good I thought trade. that was pretty funny. Good yeah, trade yeah, overall, for though. sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. What are you thinking about talking about next week, sir? I don't know. What do you we had a nice little detour this week from our the the things we were doing? So do you want to Yeah, man. Do you want to stick on an iceberg topic? Do you want to go back to a big topic? What do you want to I was thinking that maybe we could uh you know, I always want to keep it, you know, chilling. I want to keep topics that that are going to hold interest and keep people coming back, of course. But I don't I don't want to, I don't there's no, there's no like real strict criteria. Uh I think I honestly think that you have more of a reason to to stick to that than I do because I'm all over the place with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. hardcore punk folk punk yeah like i I cover all of it man i'm not gonna ever not but that's why uh i called my channel what i called it because i wanted to make sure i had a very wide berth and and a lot of uh options so i don't i don't i'm down for whatever man i was thinking maybe we should start talking about some ska punk okay maybe do like let's see (laughs) top five ska punk bands Okay. And and, and, and I try to do it with the context of like their scotness, right? Because it's like there's a lot of bands no. that have scot. Top five scot punk bands. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, no. And I, we'll do it like we did with the with like the uh ninety the ninety eight bands. You know, you have your top five, I have my top five. We'll see if we overlap at all. If we don't, you'll go first, I'll go second. Or maybe I'll go first, you go second this time. Whatever. Flip a coin. I don't yeah. care. Um I think I think on that list. I'll have as much knowledge as you probably. I didn't on the no effects stuff, so it was easier for me to make it a faster. You know what I'm saying? I was able to, to make that my my mm-hmm. my portion of the video a little bit faster. I I really enjoyed talking with you about that. You had a lot of insight. And uh I've watched that video twice already, just to like uh, okay. learn some stuff, you know. I, I mean I've been a fan of that band since the nineties, but not like I am some other bands. They're, they don't rank as high for me as they do for you, but I still mm-hmm. appreciate them as much, if that makes any sense. Yeah, but uh, yeah, man, we can do like maybe some ska punk, and then in a couple of weeks, I would wouldn't mind talking about some uh, oi or skinhead stuff. But uh, yeah, so let's let's start with the ska stuff, and then we'll we'll hit into the oi. That, that's where I, I want to go with that stuff um, as well. But I'll get a little bit of lead time on that to to really dive like, into like ska- talk about oi as in like actual like like oi music. Yeah, well, what I, you'll take the lead on that one, but you'll kind of oh yeah the, the general. I mean, I, I still there's still tons that I don't know about it. So I mean, but yeah, that'll be a couple of weeks from now. We can do uh, top five. Let's see. How do you want to do it? You want to do ska punk bands or ska bands? How do you want to word it? Because it's gonna be it's gonna be a difference. Well, that's, that's why what I say that's why it was gonna be difficult. Because I think we have different conceptions of what ska punk even is. So that's why it's gonna be kind of okay. Here's here's my question for you then. If we call it top five ska bands, would that include bands like Suicide Machines? See, that's a good question because when you say ska bands, I immediately go to more of like I'm thinking of like stuff that you're more into. You know what I mean? Of like the, okay, the, of like the two like tone specials and all that. Yeah, yeah that's why I, that's immediately the band I thought of right away is like the specials. Okay, but, but if we said ska punk, then obviously like again, Suicide Machines and all that would be right in the mix. Um, I think we should. Do you think? Okay, so like, do. You, I think the specials would are like a punk band, even though they don't really do punk. For, like they are very much a it's part of punk. Just like Flog and Molly is same kind of thing. They're not a traditional punk band, but they're a punk band. So I think we can define it. I think it would be a better show if we defined it individually because we would have a wider swath of where we went. Cause if we did, if we did just, just Scott, I think we'd have to do like an iceberg episode. Okay. You know what I mean? So just we'll call up. it top five ska punk bands. Yeah. Okay. I, I, and I still don't Let's like punk, I don't like punk being the thing that defi- I, I wish there was another term for than ska punk. Okay. Then let's Let's sit here for a second. Cuz I think um, we're thinking of the same thing we're just not sure how to define it. Yeah. Well, no, I mean cuz I I was thinking that we could do top 5 ska bands just in general and then we'll have to like omit Op Ivy because we're both going to put them like way up at the top. And yeah. we can just start the show off with Op Ivy, of course, because why would we not? As like, our, like God, our Godfather sort of guiding. Yeah, the, like okay. when I when I say ska bands, dude, like I personally, I think of ska bands. I think less than Jake, just as fast as I think the specials. Okay, see that's what I didn't know because, like, again, 
I would, those are two of the bands I would come up off the top of my head are less than Jake and the specials. And they don't really feel like they're in the same genre to, to a lot of people. You know what I mean? I mean, they're, but, they're, they're in the same genre just as much as, as, you know, rancid and discharge are both punk bands, no effects. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Hell, no effects and rancid are completely different genres, but they're both punk bands, right? They, yeah, they, so they do like very different things. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, 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 think, I, think I think we don't need to think as hard as we're thinking about it. Actually, I think we're thinking of the same. Yeah, I might actually do. I might actually make my 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 portion of the video faster and actually separate it and have like, hey, here's my top five, my top five, and have like, I had to differentiate it because I listen to tons of that stuff. So there's tons of bands that I'm gonna want to talk about. And I can yeah. do it quick. I can, I can make each. I mean, you saw how fast I did my no effects portion. I can do it mm -hmm. quick. So yeah, you're more um, of a true ska head, I, I would say, than I am. Where I, I like a lot of like real ska stuff, dude. Yeah. Like real We're, old ska. Everything I but, like, there's there's usually that kind of a punk rock leaning or connection to it. Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, but I think we. I mean, we'll have we'll have a little bit of crossover, and that those are the parts we can. No, speak dude. Through, but let's just do be. top five ska punk bands. Let's just right. call it that because people will gravitate towards that, and That's that will a, give us some parameters. It'll it'll it won't muddy the waters. Let's 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 go with Scott Punk bands. Um, okay. And then if we have overlap, we'll we'll we'll, we'll talk about that. But uh, yeah, that so, makes it better. I think I think right. we were right the first time. All right. Op Ivy and our five favorite <laughs> Scott Punk bands because that's actually oh. what I'm gonna call the video: Operation and the top five other Scott Punk bands. Which which it just gives us an opportunity to just talk Op Ivy, which we you and I can. Just, that's all I really want to talk about. <laughs> we can do that for like we do a twenty we do a twenty four hour stream out of a band that made one album, Bro, and you and I can I could, just going on and on. Yeah, dude. Hey, man, what what do you want to do to help me celebrate my one thousand subs here in the next couple of months? Do you want to jump on a live stream with me? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I we'll think I that. might just uh, start the live. Send you the link and then you jump on when you want. I'm thinking about doing like a like a really 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 long live stream. Okay. Like yeah. something preposterous, like six so, hours or some stupid shit. Yeah. So get I, I would say to you get all your kind of regulars on the on the hook there, so it could be like a big showcase of your channel. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. But uh, yeah, dude, awesome man. Well, we'll talk Scott Punk bands next week. I'm excited about this one. Uh, the only band that I hope you don't put on the list is Goldfinger. Because I don't understand why people call them a ska punk band. Yeah. Oh man, they they may be on the list. They oh really? <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Oh jeez. Um, okay, I, I, last. I didn't think of that, but you mentioned them. I'm like, oh. Okay, yeah. <laughs> last question before I go. Then, does Rancid qualify as a ska punk band? <laughs> so real quick, and we may answer this fully in our next episode. I never thought of them as that much of a Scottish band outside of their one album until okay. I, until I became an adult and talked to other adults who knew Rancid like in their prime. And okay. they all, they all viewed Rancid as a ska band, like, like almost as much as they thought of them as a punk band. And so it's like, Oh, is this a generational thing? Is this a time? No pun intended, but like a time. It era might. Thing. It and it might be, be because if you just heard Rancid on the radio, then you heard two different Scott, you heard Ruby Soho and you heard, um, uh, Time bomb. Like, Wait, especially Ruby Soho is a ska song? No, but if you listen to that and Time Bomb, you would conclude that this is probably more of a ska band than you know what they look, what their physical appearance look like, right? Interesting, because it was kind of a trick question. I don't think of them as a ska pop band even a little bit. I think the world does, though. Really? Yes. I think in it, not not in terms of punk rock. I think in terms of punk rock, they are so reverted as, as a punk band. Or hated as okay. a punk band, that 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 is where because that's that's their whole. It's like how the punk rock NBA made that video. Like that's their whole thing is being a punk band, and I absolutely yeah. agree with it. I think in terms, if we're talking mainstream music, in terms of mainstream music, their contribution to the musical landscape, probably ska. Probably people okay. think of them as ska. And so then after, as I got older, I I found more people who weren't really into punk or didn't know as much about punk or not insane people like you and I. And they tended to, huh. to lean way more of rancid in their contributions to Scott. So I think I think a lot of people would. And like we're gonna mention, I we'll probably leave them off the list because we talk about them every week, and we're gonna have yeah. an Op Ivy segment. So they'll probably also be exempt, but it's funner to say because Op, Op Ivy is, I think, undoubtedly a ska punk band. You know what I mean? They are. I the think that, that No Effects has more ska songs than Rancid does. Probably, but I think there's more Scott influence in Rancid. Just oh in no, general, I, I'm not arguing that at all. I just thought it was interesting that I was sitting here thinking about it, and I was like, actually, I think yeah, like, has like, 
like there's no Scott songs on Tomorrow Never Comes. There's no Scott songs on Let's Go or Self Titled or or yeah, uh, yeah, any Self Titled album. That, yeah, dude, any... I just listened to a uh, rancid. What's this like demos from the pit or something? Have you ever heard that? No, is that what you were playing on your stream the other day? Really? No, 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 no. It's like way before that. It's like right in between Op Ivy and Self Titled '93. It's like. I'm gonna do a whole stream on it, man. I might do it tomorrow. It is, dude. You can you can feel the energy, dude. Like that when I listened to that, I was like, no fucking wonder they got as big as they got. Like you can feel it. You can feel the uh, potential in this music, bro. It's wild, man. It is wild, dude. I fucking loved it dude That's i'm right. diving in deep right now bro i'm finding all kinds of shit because you're not a big fan of, of that first ep huh as, as like a lot of old school rancid fans I, I, okay look i'm a huge fan of it because it's rancid content and it's way better to me than their self-titled 2000 stuff was but i'm not gonna sit here and act like it's as good as their top half of their discography it's not mm -hmm. but it, it's it's necess it's, it's necessary to get to where they got so like mm -hmm. i love it and, and appreciate it but dude i i that's such an edge lord thing to say, bro. Oh, dude, their best stuff is their early stuff, and only their early stuff. Their first EP is the only thing that matters, dude. Fucking shut up, Dork. Like, and, and on, you can't have that same take about every band, by the way. Because by that, because if you have that take of every band, that means every band should have only released one album. If you, if you have that take. That's that's I think that's how these people want you to think that they believe. And then, like, uh, in the same thread, I saw a guy tell say. Oh, this is their best stuff ever. And then, like four or five comments down, that same guy was like, "Except that, like, Outcome the Wolves is my favorite album." I'm like, "That's like the polar opposite sound, bro." <laughs> so, so, so that would mean Outcome the Wolves, <laughs> dude. It's so crazy, bro. But uh, awesome, man. This was a hell of a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed yeah. it, man. I know I talked your ear off tonight. Yeah, no, I learned a lot too. Want to actually want to check more of this stuff out and not have a better reference point uh, to to what a lot of it is about. I think you're gonna really like. Um, I, I think you're going to really like Pat the Bunny. I am going to be flabbergasted if you don't like Matt Pless. Obviously, uh, uh, Days and Days will be all up, all up your alley. But uh, listen to Wingnut Dishwashers Union. And if you like that, let me know and I'll send you down the right path. Okay, real quick. What was the band in the Lookouts book that was literally playing in laundromats that was kind of folk punk? Um, that was, I think Brent's TV was their name. I don't know if they were exactly folk punk. Wait, but they, what? I don't know them. I think they were called Brent's TV, and they would literally play. I learned. I learned. I just learned about them through the Lookout book, and I, and okay. I looked them up. And they literally got their start in laundromats, and like, and they would play on like literal washboard. You know, like got a lot of the things that the folk punk bands do, but they, uh, they like went on like, right. a, they went on like a laundromat tour. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> they Hold on, looking, laundromats. That's awesome. I believe that was that was the band again. I, and I just learned, I didn't know about that. I learned about that through the Lookout group. I mean, when you kept saying that name, I was like, who was the band in the Lookout book that literally like gained their following? Like they couldn't go too high fi Like in the book, it kind of frames it as once they were going to play actual like clubs. Like that was, you know, that was the sellout moment for them. Well, I'm going to look into them because that sounds amazing. Um, yeah. Dude, do you want to hear what I'm trying to do? This is a very lofty goal, but if I can accomplish it, dude, I think you'll even be surprised and, and impressed. What is, is I'm trying to find a way to get Brad Logan on the show. Okay. Good Wait, luck. you know who that is? The um, the dude, like I, I kind of want to tell you offline, but. Um, okay. Well, yeah. All right, here, tell me in a second. All right, guys, we'll see y'all next week with the uh, top five Scott Punk bands, dude. Thanks for hanging out. I love you guys. See you soon. Peace. Bye.